Hi kisses and welcome back to Nina Ready Eats. Today I have mussels and some boiled eggs with a hoisin sauce, mushroom soy sauce, rice vinegar, onions, garlic, all that good stuff. I made it Asian style. Grab yourself something to eat, thumbs up this video, leave a comment and let's go ahead and get started. Let's do it. I had frozen these and then I tried cooking them so they're not going to pop open all the way. But I was craving muscle. Oh my God, this is so good. Something about that mushroom soy sauce. Look at those onions. It just changes the whole game and that's whoo, hot. Mm. <laughs> Little muscles is hot. Oh yeah. Oh my God, so hot. They can hold on to some heat. Today we're gonna to be talking about the boundaries of friendships. Now, before when someone would say, oh, let's be friends, I never had boundaries. I never even knew that I could have boundaries in a friendship, but once I figured it out, yeah. One of the first things that I tell people when they want to be friends with me, I say the same thing to every single person. My friendships have boundaries. And at first they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, of course, like, of course they should have boundaries. <laughs> and my boundaries are always, I hold on to my boundaries regardless of what anybody else may be going through. Some people may say that that makes me a bad friend. Some people may say, I totally agree with you. So you're gonna let me know how you feel about these boundaries. Mm. So good, so, so good. Mm -hmm. I love this Asian style flavored um, seasoning. I mix rice vinegar, mushroom soy sauce, sesame seed oil, garlic powder, garlic onions, and hoisin sauce. Oh, so good. That much, oh, oops, that mushroom sauce is very, very um, salty. So you gotta use just a little bit of it. Do it in stages, because trust me, it's very, very salty. Oh my God, it's so good. My number one boundary when I have friends, not me going back to this show, is however it is that you had your life figured out financially before I came into your life, continue to do that. Don't ever call me and say the words, can I borrow or can I have? The answer is no. I used to have the kind of friendships and family relationships and business relationships where people could call me at any time and say, oh my God, I didn't pay my car this month. Can I borrow some money? Or, oh my God, I really wanna do this. Can I borrow some money? The answer is no. <laughs> I'll tell people that from the very beginning. When you first tell them that, they're like, what? People already call you? To borrow money? That's crazy. And I guess they be forgetting like the little boundaries I be putting up. So, you know, as the friendship progresses, they forget. 
<laughs> and sure enough, they'll fix their mouth to be like, can I borrow? Or, oh my God, they start complaining about their financial situation over and over and over and over again. And that's called grooming, okay? When someone is constantly calling you, complaining about their financial situation, it's because sooner or later, they're already grooming you and they want you to feel bad for them and they're gonna be asking you to borrow some money. That's my number one rule. Don't ever call me to say, can I borrow or can I have money? However it is that you were figuring out your financial issues before I got into the picture, you gonna keep that same energy. You cannot call me for that. My second boundary is when I give people advice. I do not deal with energy parasites. Now you might be asking yourself, what is an energy parasite? I'm about to tell you what an energy parasite is. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many friends I lose over this one. Or people just stop <clears throat> contacting you. They'll call you the first time. And in most cases, they're complaining about their boyfriends or their girlfriends. The first time they call me complaining about their situation, their significant other, a person that they chose to be with, okay? They choose this person every day. Every day they wake up and they decide and they make the choice to stay in this relationship. First time they call me, oh, my boyfriend is this, or my girlfriend is that, or my boyfriend this, that, and the other. First time they call me, I'll give them advice. I'll hear them out. I'll hear them all the way out. They can go through all the motions with me. That's me being a friend, okay? Me hearing you out. You're going through all the motions. I'm letting you vent. I'm giving you the room and the space that you need to get all these feelings off your chest. You can do all that. I got you. I'll let you vent. They usually say something like, what do you think I should do? Or what would you do in my situation? So I'll give them genuine advice depending on what the situation is. Right? That's what friends do. They'll hear you out. They'll give you advice. Right? First time they call you. That's what I do. The second time they call me with the exact same problem, I give them a warning and I say, listen, this is the second time that you've called me about your man complaining about the same situation. Didn't I give you advice? Yeah, you did. But girl, they give you all the rundown. I love him. I let them vet a second time. I give them advice. Again. Now let them know this time. Listen. Listen, mama. I just gave you advice. This is the second time that we've talked about the same problem. I already gave you advice. You asked me for advice, so I gave it to you. Okay? Excuse me, excuse me. My man's cheating on me. Girl, I caught him cheating again. My man's beating on me. Girl, he beat me up again. My man just gave me an STD. Girl, he just gave me an STD again. Now my advice is gonna be a little different. Hey, listen. It's the second time you call me about the same problem. Do me a favor. I've already given you advice. I'll let you vent for a couple of hours. The third time, if you're thinking about calling me again to vent to me about your man or your woman, a person that you are choosing to be with, don't call me. 
What? The next time you want to complain about your situation that you are making a conscious choice to be in, don't call me. Call somebody else and let them hear you out. You go vent to somebody else. Don't call me to vent to me. What? Why? Because now you're becoming an energy parasite. I'm giving you my time, which I can't get back. I could be doing other things, taking care of my life situations, handling my own things. And I'm investing time into you to give you advice about the same problem that clearly can be fixed. And you're making a conscious choice to not do that. So no, I cannot give you a third conversation to discuss your boyfriend again. You're not going to suck the life out of me for the third time about a situation that you clearly can fix. If you're not happy with this person, stop being with them. Break up with them. What happens with people is they have no intentions in fixing the problem. They have no desire to fix the problem with their relationship. They just want to drain you out of all your good energy. And they will tell that problem 50 different times to whoever's willing to listen. And they'll tell you the same story. You ever had a friend that call you about the same thing every day, every week? It's the same thing every single day. Complaining, complaining, complaining. I want to let you know, if you're one of those people, you sound crazy, okay? Because why are you complaining to your friends about the man that you chose? Why are you complaining to your friends about the woman that you chose? Don't talk no mess about the person you are choosing every day. That makes you look crazy. Hell to the nine. You cannot call me to tell me the same problem 15 times. Because I'm going to cut you off right there. We're not going to be going back and forth about the same shit over and over again. Those are called energy parasites. People that will cling on to you just to tell you the same crap every single day. And have nothing positive to mm -hmm. talk about. They'll drain you out of all your energy. All of it. And you're allowing them to do that. Because you're allowing them to call you every day. About the same nonsense. That doesn't make any sense. They're taking you out of your happy energy. Just because you're willing to listen to their problems. If they don't pop open, don't eat them. Straight up. Don't even eat them. That doesn't make any sense. And why are you constantly complaining about the person that you chose to be in a relationship with? That makes you a hypocrite. If you're going to complain about them, break up with them first. Don't call your friends, your family. Don't call your mama. Don't call your daddy. Don't call your sister. Don't call your cousins, your coworkers, and bash this person. And then a couple weeks later, you right back in bed with the person you just finished bashing. What sense does that make? What sense does that make? Now you got, this is what happens when you call your mama, when you call your daddy, when you call your bestie. And you letting them know what kind of problems you got with your boyfriend? Let me tell you what happens. Now they can't stand your boyfriend. Now they got beef with your boyfriend. Now they're looking at your boyfriend crazy. They're looking at your girlfriend crazy. And every time you bring them around or every time you try to talk to them or every time you try to, you know what I'm saying, do something with them and have some kind of, if you bring them around the family, whatever, now your family is harvesting 
all these negative feelings about your partner because of your mouth, because you ran your mouth. You had an entire smear campaign about your boyfriend or your partner with all these different people. So when you bring them around, now everybody got all these negative feelings about this person, but you laying in bed with them the same night. That doesn't make any sense. If you're the kind of person that every time you got a problem, you want to call somebody and you want to, you know what I'm saying, slander them. I start looking at you crazy. You can't call me about the same problem 15 times. We're not going to do that. <laughs> you're not about to have a smear campaign, a hate campaign towards this person when you made a conscious choice to be with them. And you're still laying in bed with them. And you're still being intimate with them. I'm going to start looking at you crazy. Real quick. And this is why I have boundaries when it comes to people. And when I build friendships. You can't call me like that. But well, we're supposed to be friends. Bye. I know, Poppy. That's what I said. We're supposed to be friends. Yeah. I gave you advice. I heard you out. Not once, but twice. Now you're trying to make this a, a situation. <clears throat> no. You can't get me to harvest all these negative feelings about a person that I've never met. Just because you want to say that they're like this and they're like that. If you're talking about your partner like that, so crazy 24-7, while you're still with them, I'm not talking about once you break up. You want to vent to everybody about what happened in the relationship on why you guys broke up. I'm talking about why you're still actively in a relationship with this person. You're still actively in a relationship with them. Nah. Mm-mm. Not my thing. I'm not that kind of friend. And when people realize, because I remember I had to, man, I had to let somebody know about themselves. They kept calling me, complaining about their man, complaining about their man. And I told them, I was like, don't call me no more about this situation. You can call me about anything else, but don't ever call me again about your man. Why? I don't understand. You were still with him, right? Yeah. Just stay with him. Shut up and swallow all that. Whatever you're going through, swallow it. Because you're still with that person. And you looking real crazy slandering their name to me. Because you want me to hate them with you while you with them. Nah, you just showed me that you a hypocrite. Oh. You talking about this person and you with them? You still with them? You done called and vented and, oh, this, 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 and this chick that, and oh my God, and... You know what you're doing? You're trying to build a smear campaign and a hate campaign against that person because chances are you're probably doing some dirt too and you don't want that shit to get out. You don't want that out there. <laughs> it ain't always the person you're talking about. Usually the people that do the most talking are the ones doing the most damage. And they want everybody to believe that they're not the problem. What? What? Mm -mm. So when I build a friendship, I have very strict boundaries about allowing somebody to call me to slander their partner to me. You can't do that. Not I. Mm -mm. And I'm a really good friend, but I'm also not going to let somebody drain me out of all of my good karma and all of my positivity. Because every time... They call, I make them feel better. Hell no. Nah. Mm -mm. Nope. That will not be me. My third rule when I'm building friendships. If I'm trying to do something and hang out and I keep getting the runaround, oh, I'm so busy. Well, I ain't got time for this. 
when we're trying to book shit way in advance, weeks in advance, months in advance, like, yo, let's plan something out. Like, you know, we can hang out, we could do this, we could do that. I'm gonna keep giving you the runaround. And no matter how far in advance you try to book or schedule something or make plans with that person and you still keep getting the runaround, I will cut them off in two seconds. Because if you have to continuously push for a friendship, they're not your friends. <laughs> they're not your friends. Friendships are supposed to be organic, free-flowing, easy, fun, lighthearted, supportive, loving, caring, nurturing. If a friendship leaves you drained, exhausted, um, confused... If a friendship is leaving you, um, like if it's making you feel like, if you have a friend that's constantly putting you down, making you feel less than, they're not validating how you really feel. If they did something to hurt your feelings and they're not really respecting how you feel about the situation, that means your friends. If they're constantly trying to influence you to do something negative, they're not your friends. If they're constantly, um, Applying peer pressure towards things that could potentially ruin you. They're not your friends. If you have the kind of friend that you gave all this information to and you vented to them, you were going through a hard time, whether it's financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, you're going through something and they take all that information and they regurgitate it and spit it back out whenever you are at your lowest point because they want to kick you when you're already down instead of supporting you and uplifting you. These are not your friends. A person that is surrounded by so many different people. These aren't people that are friends. These are associates. These are work partners. If the holidays come around. And you're the only one texting everybody. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. You know, happy 4th of July. Happy birthday. And that's, and you decide, excuse me, to one day just stop texting everybody. Just as he reaches out to you, you'd be surprised on how many people forget all about you. Out of sight, out of mind. If you're the one that always has to constantly keep the friendship alive... If you have to continuously nurture the friendship, if you always constantly have to fix the problems within the re relationship, these are not friends. So choose your friends wisely. And remember, you're choosing these people. You choose the people that you want around. You choose your boyfriend. You choose your girlfriend. You choose your fiance. You chose your husband. You choose your wife. You choose, you know what I'm saying, where you work. You're making daily choices that don't suit you. And every day you choose the same toxic people to be around. If you can't stand your boyfriend or if you can't stand your girlfriend, if you have to call somebody to dog out the person that you're in a relationship with. And I'm not talking about venting just once or twice. I'm talking about constantly Five, six, seven, it's, it's the song you sing every single time you jump on the phone with somebody and you're singing that same song to five, six different people about that person, that makes you look crazy. And if you want to know how people are expressing themselves about you when you're not in a room, if you really want to know if people mess with you and they really care about you, walk out of that room and come back in. And when you feel all that tension, if you have five, six, 10, 15 people looking at you funny, that campaign you on, that team you on, that boyfriend you got, that girlfriend you got, they are literally the ones making everybody looking at you crazy. Because if that person you were with was expressing themselves kindly about you, if they were respecting you when you weren't in that room, everybody would embrace you. Everybody would love you. If the person you're with is giving everybody else the green light by smearing your name, by talking about you, by making you look bad every chance that they get by downgrading you, by talking shit about you every chance that they get, pay attention because that entire, 
that entire perimeter, that entire radius of all those people, there's going to be energy there. And you should be able to read that woman and be like, damn, why are all these people so comfortable with mistreating me? Oh my God. My boyfriend's been talking about me. My girlfriend's been talking about me. My partner's been talking about me. They've been dogging me out so much to all these people. Now, all these people resent me, hate me, don't like me, are looking at me funny because the green light came from your partner. That smear campaign started from your partner. It's really simple. It's really, really simple. If you walk into a situation and everybody got their nose looking at you funny, that smear campaign came from the closest person to you. They made them feel so comfortable because all they do is dog you out when you're not in the room. Choose your friends wisely. Choose your boyfriends wisely so you don't have to complain about them 24-7. I'm not the kind of friend that you can call any point in a given time of the day to complain about the person you chose to be with. That's not me. Those are my boundaries. Don't ever fix your mouth to ask me for no money if you're trying to be my friend. Can I borrow hell to the nah? Don't, don't talk shit about the people that you around. Don't talk, don't talk to me about your friends. Don't talk bad about your friends to me. I don't want to hear it. I will stop somebody dead in their tracks. Ain't that your homegirl? Because it doesn't just happen in relationships. It happens in friendships. Ain't that your homegirl? Yeah, but no, no, no. Don't talk to me about your homegirl. Don't dog your homegirl out to me. I don't want to hear that shit. Because that's your homegirl. Y'all going to be buddy, buddy up tomorrow. So why are you calling me to dog her out? Or to dog him out to me? Hell nah, miss me with that. Miss me with that. I'm being loyal to people that don't even deserve loyalty. Miss me with all that. Don't ever call me and fix your mouth to ask me for no money. And don't, talk, don't call me to talk shit about nobody else. I don't care to hear it. I don't care to hear it. After I give you advice once, that's all you get. You get advice once. I will listen to you a second time and I will refresh your memory on the advice I gave you the first time. You didn't take that advice or you didn't choose a better choice for yourself. Don't call me the third time. That friendship is over. Nah, because you're showing me who you are. And you're the kind of person that can sit there and dog somebody out and then beep all up in their face. Like y'all really, really buddy, buddy and y'all friends, friends. Hell nah. Not my cup of tea. Not the way I get down. So whenever you build a friendship, make sure you have your boundaries all the way up. Because if you don't, they'll run a mock on your ass. Okay? They will run you. They will suck you out of your finances. They will suck you out of your energy. They will suck the positivity out of you and leave you empty. Meanwhile, they're still going to go hang out and be cool with the same people they just finished talking about. Choose wisely. Until next time. Bye, guys.